What is going on, Draconians? Draco Invictus here with another movie review. My third of the week. I've just had some extra crazy time. Uh, my buddy is uh, in the process of selling his house and just went on the market this last week. And so I've had to get out of the house for showings. And today they had an open house. So I also have to go to work in uh, just a little bit. But I figured I would go catch a film that I missed uh, when it first came out and I wanted to catch up and uh, do a review of it. So I know this is, uh, most people have already seen it and stuff like that, but I wanted to get my thoughts out there. Uh, so I sat down and watched the movie Shazam uh, this afternoon and uh, yeah, it was, <sighs> it's one of the better DC films. <laughs> it's sad to say, but uh, yeah, it, um, you know what, let's get into it. Matter of fact, let's get into it. Right now, we're going to talk about the pros, the cons, uh, any nitpicks that I might have had, and then we'll give a score at the end. Of course, this whole thing will be spoiler-free, so if you would like to talk about this film some more, uh, now that I'm posting a review, uh, let's keep it out of the comment section below. I mean, obviously, you can comment on the video. I look forward to your guys' comments. We want to keep those spoiler-free, too, but over on my Discord, link down in the description below, is a channel called Spoilers Ahead, where we can talk about anything we want and we can spoil the crap out of the film because, as it says in the name, Spoilers Ahead. So everyone's warned ahead of time before they ever venture in there. So let's talk about Shazam. Now, this is a DC Comics movie, and unless you are a diehard comic book fan, you've probably never heard of Shazam before, and I, I am not totally versed in Shazam. I was not a huge Shazam reader when I was young, uh, but I do know of Shazam, so um, I do understand some of uh, what was going on in the film and stuff like that. Now, uh, one question or one thing to answer before we dive into anything, contrary to most other DC films, this has two, two post-credit scenes. One is a mid-credit uh, roll, and the other is a true post-credit scene. Uh, the mid-credit scene uh, kind of alludes to a Shazam two. Uh, they that's what they're using it for much like Marvel's done with their films and their post credit scenes the second one is just pure fun it plays off something that you already saw in the movie and then they do a little bit more um, of it at the post credits and it was just fun to stick around and see that and of course because it's a DC film people as soon as the credits started to roll most of the the theater, granted, there were probably only 15 people in that big old stadium seating, you know, theater that I was watching it in, but most of them got up and left. It was me and two other guys, and uh, we stuck around all the way to the end. We all laughed at the end, and then we all got up. So um, let's talk about cons first, then we'll do pros, and then we'll talk about any little nitpicks I have. Cons. I can't really think of any. This is not your typical DC film. Uh, if you look at, especially the recent DC films, other than, well, okay, <laughs> uh, Superman v Batman or Batman v Superman and Justice League, kind of darker films. Uh, Aquaman was not nearly as dark. Wonder Woman wasn't nearly as dark. But um, this was very lighthearted. It is, I think, it's just rated PG. It's not even PG thirteen. Uh, so this was truly meant more as more of a kid's film than most of the other DC comic movies have been lately. Uh, the DCEU movies, rather. And they do kind of put it in with uh, in that same universe, the expanded universe, but they don't implicitly say it. Um, we do know that, that Superman does exist... Uh, Aquaman exists. I mean, it, we, the big DC characters do exist in the universe of the film, but it may not be the film universe versions of those characters. So uh, that would have been nice to know. So that's kind. Of, that's more of like a nitpick. But um, I can't really think of any cons. Knowing what this film, who this film was for, takes a lot of what. I, if it was more of an adult film. 
Um, I would certainly criticize it a lot more. I'd have a couple cons for sure. But knowing that this was a PG, this was something that you could take your 10, 11 year old to. There are a couple little, you know, I, I don't know, kids nowadays, <laughs> what they're exposed to is just insane. But there are a couple creatures, several creatures, uh, that get pulled into the film that might be a, s a little bit scary for some of the younger viewers, might be. Um, but all in all, there wasn't anything too crazy in there. Yeah, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna kind of skip cons, and we, I have a couple things in my head that might be nitpicks. Uh, let's move on to the pros. A wonderful cast. Uh, the the young boy and I don't know most of the actors' names. Um, the young boy that ends up being Shazam. His name was Bobby. I think Bobby. Um, that does a great job. He is the lead. He's the co-lead with Zachary Levi, who plays Shazam. And um, all the kids were great. Uh, the the school bullies. You have to have that in there. You have to have that moment. At times, this kind of reminded me of Big, uh, the film, the old film with Tom Hanks. Um, just because it's the, a kid that's shoved into an adult body and and stuff like that. Uh, but the but not ruining anything. He is a foster child, and he's bounced from house to house to house. And, um, he ends up in this house and there's like five other kids that live there. And that is the bulk of where this film takes place is when he's in that house. You don't really see him in any of the other homes. They just refer to it. You know, there's a number. And, um, so the, the other kids that live in the house and the foster parents all wonderfully cast. Everyone did a superb job. They had great delivery. Uh, they really had a chemistry, uh, and it felt very real, and I really, really enjoy that, especially when you're dealing with small kids. I say small kids. I, the youngest may have been 9 or 10, at least represented to be 9 or 10. Hell, she could have been 14 for all I know. But, um, but yeah, the, the kids did really well. The foster parents, the, the big baddie uh, was formidable. You know, he he seemed to have the greater wisdom and knowledge and stuff like that. And they they actually opened the film with his backstory, which I thought was a great twist. We actually get to see how the the villain was in his formative years. And so that was very cool. And um, yeah, I mean, it just it was a good easy watch. The movie's about two hours long, and it was not a hard watch at all. Um, it was a lot of fun. I found myself laughing a lot. Uh, the, the comedic lines, the timing was very good. The script was well done. It is a film that adults will like, but kids will absolutely love it too. And so that, it, that says it all right there. I mean, when you can take the whole family, nothing's going to be too scary and just go to a film for a couple hours. It's really nice to, to have that idea. Matter of fact, I would love for my sister, who is a foster parent, um, I would love for her to, I may buy it for, for Blu-ray because it's something that most of her foster kids would be able to watch. And um, I think she'd be okay with that. And it does tell a great story of some foster parents that, that really love the children that they're, that they're raising. So, um, yeah, nitpicks. The CGI could have been a little bit better. Um, Zachary Levi's uh, Shazam's costume could have been a little bit better. It seemed very, very simple. Uh, the creatures... Uh, the, the technology's better today. It should have looked better. But again, they may have been dialing that back so that they weren't totally realistic looking to, to help smaller children. You know, I'm thinking 10... 11, 12 year olds, um, you know, so that they weren't absolutely terrified because you're talking, you're talking about essentially, and I'm not ruining anything here, uh, the, the physical manifestation of the seven deadly sins. 
And um, so they are very gargoyle-esque and demon-esque. And one of them looked really, really cool. The rest of them, I was like, meh, whatevs, you know? So that is, that's really my real big nitpick. Everything else was really good. I mean, even the school bullies get the comeuppance. And the very end of the film uh, is very lighthearted. And it plays off of something that, that happened in the middle of the film. And you get that payoff at the end. And then you get the extra bit of payoff at the end that you weren't expecting. It, 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 it was a shock to me. And it was a lot of fun. And everyone gasped. And then all of us laughed. And it was really, really a fun time. So I would absolutely recommend Shazam for anyone over probably the age of 10 to 12. Uh, just depending on what your sensibilities are as a parent. Um, as to, you know, I mean, it, again, think of like moving gargoyles and they, they have that kind of a look. Um, yeah, but Zachary Levi was wonderful. Uh, he was very, very campy comic booky. And again, a kid stuck in an adult's body trying to figure out what superpowers he has and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. I absolutely recommend it. I give this movie a solid 8.5. Just because with the recent deluge of superhero films, it's hard to, to label something much higher than that because you really have to be swinging for the fences. So, uh, but that is a solid, solid score. And um, I think that it is well worth your money to go see this in theaters simply because of the bigger screen, uh, you know, the, the great sound effects and stuff like that. Go check it out. And that is going to wrap it up. And let's see here. It is... There's one movie coming out next week. Okay, so I'm probably going to go see Godzilla. It's not super high on my list, just because I haven't liked the recent versions of Godzilla. I mean, I grew up watching classic Godzilla. So, um, But I'm definitely going to be seeing Men in Black International. I'm going to be seeing... Oh, there's a whole slew of them that are coming out here in the next three weeks that I'm going to try and see each one of them as soon as I can from release date. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. If there's a movie that you would like me to do a review on, then absolutely hit me up on that and um, I will uh, check it out and see if it works for my timetable and stuff like that. But until next time, Draconians, you take care of yourselves out there. This is Draco Invictus saying this has been the greatest day of my life. See ya!